We've only got one more game to go in the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy. And while Rebirth just recently released, and we may be a few years away from the final game, we may not have to wait as long as we did in between Remake and Rebirth. We'll get into that, plus everything we know from the developers about Remake Part 3, and what we are likely to see in what is expected to be the grandest, most ambitious single-player Final Fantasy game yet. Just an FYI, much of this information has been stated in some of my previous videos when talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3, but contains some additional insight from these interviews. Also, there are spoilers regarding the original game that will help us piece together what will transpire in Part 3 with the help of the interview, so if you're wary of OG Final Fantasy VII story bits and the locations appearing in Disc 2 and Disc 3, well, now you know. Alright, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is an incredibly massive game, with the title sporting six large areas to roam around in. Well, seven if you include the Meridian Ocean. But just you wait until Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3 launches, because the world map that we've seen in Rebirth is really just a fraction of what we will get in Part 3. With Part 2 leaving off at the end of Disc 1 of the 1997 original, Remake Part 3 is essentially Disc 2, which is nearly as long as Disc 1, and the much smaller Disc 3 of the original game. That said, we have about half a game's worth of events that are going to be taking place in Part 3, and the developers have said that utilizing the game's airship, the High Wind, is of utmost importance to get right in Remake Part 3. Rebirth game director Naoki Hamaguchi recently discussed his ambitions about Remake Part 3 with Gene Park of the Washington Post, stating that he hopes the High Wind can be accommodated in the final game with its fully explorable world map. I definitely want to address the same for what is likely expected from our experience with the High Wind to explore the world, Hamaguchi stated. And what a world it is going to be. This is what we saw in Final Fantasy VII Remake, just a small little crater of an area that represented Midgar, and here is what we were able to explore in Rebirth. With much of the eastern and western continents to explore, much of the clouds that eponymously revealed more and more of the game world as we explored more regions gave way to the full extent of what we could travel to in Rebirth. With Part 3, though, it wouldn't be just the existing map that we could travel to again, but rather the entire world. YouTuber Final Fan TV put out a video doing some incredible work at converting Rebirth's map to the rest of the original map of Final Fantasy VII, with the content creator essentially adding in the various regions and locations that would be featured in Disc 2 and Disc 3 into Remake Part 3. Final Fan TV puts big importance on the region of Wutai, a significant landmass residing just west of the western continent. And like Rebirth did to the areas of the PS1 original, Wutai is going to be absolutely massive, and will most probably be its own region unique to Part 3. Given Yuffie had a big character moment of her own in Wutai in the original game, she is more than likely to have her proper time to shine, just like Red 13 did in Cosmo Canyon and Barrett in Coral, for example. Wutai, a very much optional part of the original game, will be a mandatory location and completely fleshed out here, featuring a massive city and some mountains and forests stretching north to south. Maybe Fort Tamblin will be thrown in there for good measure, in addition to it being split into two regions due to its massive size, but this region is going to be a highlight of Remake Part 3, no doubt, featuring major story beats, including another showdown with Don Corneo. With Wutai being portrayed as its own country with a power that has caused Shinra numerous headaches, this significant landmass is a given and will be one of the many new areas that we will explore in Part 3. Especially with the war going on with Shinra and Wutai in this remake trilogy, I'd expect several new developments being added to this once optional region in the original. In fact, in an interview over on GameWatchImpress.co.jp, Tetsuya Nomura remarked that Wutai in the remake trilogy is significantly larger, and that its presence will be more fully explored in Part 3. I will include some direct quotes here, but bear in mind that this was translated via Google Translate, so the grammar and some of the original meaning may be slightly different from its original Japanese text. That said, this should paint us a larger picture of Wutai's importance in Part 3. Nomura states, quote, Wutai is a completely different country. This time, I decided to depict the country as having the power to properly compete with Shinra. 
with the interviewee understanding why this commitment to giving Wutai a larger presence in the remake trilogy over the original game, Nomura continues with, I expect it to be fleshed out quite a bit. After all, we are building a whole country. This is incredibly exciting, and makes me even more eager to check out how this beautiful location will look like in Part 3. Now, let me know what you think about this and Wutai in Part 3 in the comments below, as this area, like Gungaga in the original, seems to be getting completely overhauled with significant importance here in the remake trilogy. Many players were expecting Rocket Town, an area full of importance in the original game, to be featured in Rebirth, as this was the place that introduced us to Sid Highwind later into Disc 1. Well, with Sid having been briefly introduced in Rebirth, we can absolutely expect both him and Vincent Valentine to get their proper introductions in Remake Part 3. In an interview with IGN, Rebirth director Naoki Hamaguchi discussed that while Rocket Town was not part of the script in Rebirth, that himself, along with other senior members of the development team, are all aligned to include Rocket Town for the next title. Later on in the interview, Hamaguchi would state that because the town of Gungaga in the original game was optional and very small, that he wanted to greatly explore that region and tie it into the greater narrative of the remake series. And this statement, while it can be directly and rightly applied to Wutai, of which we are going to experience in much greater detail in Part 3, can also be applied to Rocket Town as well. Rocket Town was used as a brief pit stop in the original game and was used to serve as a way to introduce Sid Highwind in his backstory, while also playing a pivotal role when the rocket would ultimately launch Cloud and his party up to space in an attempt to lessen the impact of Meteor in the events of Disc 2. Getting back to the world map of Rebirth, we can see, just north of Nibble, that there are significant clouds covering a rather large landmass roughly the size of both Nibble and Corel in area that, just like the original game, appears to be Rocket Town. With Hamaguchi suggesting in this interview that Rocket Town is an area of importance to cover here in Part 3, we can expect this area to be as massive as the plot of land this area takes up on the world map, with great stretches of hills and plains similar to those of the grasslands dotting the Rocket Town region, along with jagged mountains to the south and dramatic cliffs off to the west. Perhaps even some desert sprinkled in, just as the original world map had. Just as the grassland served as the introduction to Rebirth, so too could the Rocket Town region be just that for Remake Part 3. But if we were going solely off the events of what transpires after the Forgotten Capital in the original game, that distinction could very well go to the Great Glacier region. Sporting locations like Icicle Inn and the Crater, the Great Glacier region is also in the bag as being a place we are undoubtedly going to visit, and this place is going to look absolutely fantastic. The world of Final Fantasy VII is diverse, spanning numerous different biomes and landscapes, and Rebirth displayed that diversity spectacularly. With the frigid tundra and sheer mountains of the Great Glacier being in Part 3, this will round out the world of Final Fantasy VII brilliantly. Expect to see that snowboarding minigame come back with full force, and ultimately make its appearance at the Gold Saucer, as hinted at in Rebirth. And because the characters are going to be put through the most intense weather in this region, it's likely that we are going to see more outfits introduced in Part 3 to accommodate the elements, similarly to how Rebirth introduced swimwear in Costa del Sol. The Great Glacier region is going to be absolutely epic, but there is still another landmass not explored much in the original game that plays an important role in the story here that we are likely to see in greater detail in Remake Part 3. Now, after the events that take place at the Great Glacier in the original game, we find ourselves back in Junon, where we ultimately get the high wind, allowing us to traverse the entire globe of Gaia, and with Hamaguchi placing great importance of getting the high wind right in Remake Part 3, we can expect, just as the Meridian Ocean was an area to explore with the tiny Bronco in Rebirth, that the skies will be a region of its own in Part 3, full of its own unique world intel to complete. This is where Part 3 really distinguishes itself from Rebirth, as we now have the entire world to explore, thus opening up new locations that were previously inaccessible in prior games. 
If chocobo breeding is still not a feature in part 3, I would expect that the high wind will be used to traverse the ocean to get to Round Island to acquire the Knights of the Round Summon materia. Similar to how the tiny Bronco was used late game in Rebirth to access Gilgamesh's domain to get that summon materia. But who knows? As for me, I'd love to see chocobo breeding come to Remake Part 3 to provide further customization for the chocobos, but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. With the high wind, the Medeal region also becomes available. Of which is of huge importance to the original game's storyline as the livestream moment with Tifa and Cloud will possibly set up Part 3's most significant story chapter with Cloud, coming to terms with who he is as his mind becomes, well, less cloudy. We have seen throughout the remake series so far that Tifa has accepted Cloud at his worst, and in Part 3, Tifa deserves a Cloud at his best, and this single moment here with the both of them in the livestream could single-handedly make some of the divisive moments of the finale of Rebirth hit especially hard here. Just briefly, big spoilers regarding the end of Rebirth will be introduced real quick here, so skip to this timestamp to avoid some aspects of Rebirth's ending. With Cloud potentially coming to terms that Aerith is no longer with the party, at least in human form, in the main timeline, along with his hazy recollection of past events, this moment in Medeal with Tifa in the livestream can provide a sense of closure and finality to the events that closed off Rebirth, resulting in a Cloud more determined than ever to stop the impending doom that Sephiroth intends to introduce to the world. For many fans, some closure for Aerith and seeing certain events like laying Aerith's body in the water for her burial could play out here to give totality to the reality that the rest of the party experienced at the end of Rebirth, and further remove the clouds of Cloud's mind to position him with a healthy mindset for him to truly move forward. It's this coming to terms with his mind and his past that fans are eagerly anticipating, and Square can really capitalize on this, which could retroactively make the ending of Rebirth less contentious. Heading back to Medeal as a region, I definitely think it can be expanded on here. This region contains an archipelago of islands that may add an additional element of island hopping that can serve in a similar way to the Gungaga region, but just in an island setting. Because this is such an important location in the original game that was also not explored too much as a land, I wouldn't be surprised to see greater focus on Medeal here in Part 3. So we've covered the Great Crater region, Rocket Town region, Wutai region, and Medeal region, but outside of these singular landmasses, there isn't much left to explore on the surface of the world map. Instead, we see ourselves going underwater with the submarine for yet another massive moment in the story of Final Fantasy VII. Like the original PS1 game, Part 3's underwater area in the Meridian Ocean may be a condensed region to explore with our submarine, but this area could likely be further expanded on, with the sunken Gelnica to explore, the Emerald Weapon to potentially fight, and the underwater reactor rounding up a list of optional and main story content that is likely to be featured in this region. We've got the land, air, and the depths of the ocean to explore here in Part 3, folks. And if you thought Rebirth was mind-blowing in its varied landscapes and regions, then just you wait for Part 3 to truly one-up the previous game in its variety and region offering here. With the entire world of Gaia now available to the player, we will undoubtedly be able to revisit just about every region introduced in Rebirth, potentially repopulated with optional quests to complete with incentives to return. Speaking of incentives to return, definitely smash that like button if you're enjoying this video and subscribe to the channel so that you can return to more content like this covering Final Fantasy and beyond. The Gold Saucer will be updated to contain new mini-games like the upcoming snowboarding game introduced in the Great Glacier region, along with maybe some submarine battles and perhaps dogfights with the High Wind if we are to do that with both Shinra and Wutai at war. With the assembly of the huge materia at play here in the final part of the Final Fantasy VII storyline taking us back to numerous locations throughout the game world, including the city of Midgar, the scope of Remake Part 3 is absolutely staggering and makes you think how on earth are they going to pack all this content into one singular game? Well, thanks to Rebirth director Naoki Hamaguchi in his interview with the Washington Post, he claims that much of the work for the third game is already done, thanks in large part to the world construction being completed in Rebirth. Hamaguchi addresses that the challenge for the final game will be in getting the massive airship the Highwind to be fully playable in the world map, but with the groundwork already laid out in Rebirth for the existing world, that would mean that the developers will need to develop the Great Crater, Rocket Town, Wutai, 
and Medeal regions and some other areas for Part 3, rather than an entirely new game world. With much of the world already completed on the world map, we are likely to see another speedy release for Part 3, just as Rebirth was when it was released less than four years after Remake. Yoshinori Kitase, the producer of the Final Fantasy series, in the same interview with the Washington Post, claimed that Rebirth's speedy development was in part due to employee retention, with more than 80% of the team that worked on Remake staying on for Rebirth. With much of the assets already designed for Remake, Rebirth, along with not having to hire and train an entirely new development team, was able to be made swiftly in just a few years, even with Rebirth being significantly larger than Remake. We are likely to see this same thing happen with Part 3, even though Part 3 is expected to be significantly larger in scope than even Rebirth, as Tetsuya Nomura, back in June 2022, stated that work on Part 3 had already begun. In the fall of 2023, in an interview with Julian Chiez, a French video game personality who interviewed Rebirth game director Naoki Hamaguchi and Final Fantasy producer Yoshinori Kitase, the two explained the transition from the completion of Rebirth into Remake Part 3 with, Of course, I cannot tell you what stage we are at, but we have already made progress on the script and we are thinking about certain developments, Hamaguchi stated. He continues with, When we got to the end of the development for Remake, we started talking about a sequel with writer Kazushige Nojima, and I can think we can say that we are in the same situation today. We will truly have no idea when Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3 will ultimately be released until we get an official update about it, but we have a good idea that the game will likely launch around the same time that Rebirth took after Remake, or even sooner than that, seeing as Rebirth started its development while the world was shut down due to the pandemic. With Rebirth being released in less than four years at a scale many times larger than the Midgar-only remake, it is not entirely unlikely that the final part of the ambitious Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy will arrive in even shorter a time. Let me know when you think we will get Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 3 in the comments, and also let me know what you are most excited for in this highly anticipated finale, and check out this video if you'd like a thorough look at the latest Final Fantasy VII Rebirth patch and Final Fantasy XVI news, and I look forward to seeing all you good people real soon in the next one.